a hard question for all of you. What's the second largest sold packaged drink in the country? It's beer. But here's an easier question for all of you. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of beer being served in a restaurant? The beer cafe. I'm here at the Cyber Hub Beer Cafe to meet Rahul Singh, the man behind the brand, who, in my opinion, was possibly not meant to do this. A textile engineer by education, 20 years in retail and lifestyle, and then suddenly six years back starts the first beer cafe in Gurgaon, and today has led it to 40 cafes across 13 cities, and undisputedly the number one brand when everyone thinks beer. We're going to meet Rahul, get to speak and listen to how he thinks like an entrepreneur and more importantly his plans for the beer cafe and who he is as a person. Let's check it out. Welcome Rahul, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, you have a fascinating story. I think the, the, the biggest thing that I've always drawn from you is you were not from this industry, which I would argue was also at possibly the toughest period of your life. Do you think that because you're not from the industry makes you look at this completely differently? You know, so the most abused word is uh, think out of the box. Everybody <laughs> calls it. I'd, so we are boxed up, no doubt. You know, as a as any sector would be boxed up. You have limited views around it. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons that you know I don't come from the industry and it helps me grow this business is that everything that I see is in an unconventional way. Okay. I I don't see things the way it should be yeah. or how it's been taught or how it's been experienced across you know the sector. Yeah. I see everything. In a very different. Like a lot of people said, ours is a very service-oriented uh, smile business, which will remain. That's the core. Exactly. But tech should not be part of it. Yeah. I believe that tech is the biggest enabler. You yes. can't be dependent on tech, yes. but if you're not enabled with tech, there will be a lot of issues. Yes. So I have to fight those uh, ghosts around myself and my own team and within my sector to tell people that you have to think unconventionally. Yeah. So I think that's a benefit that I get. You're one of the very few people in the industry who almost think tech first. Like you're not tech averse at all, yeah. but you're always instead thinking of how tech could completely transform the industry you are in. It, it, it will because uh, there are two sides to tech. Uh, in fact, now I have a third pillar to the tech. So the first pillar is the consumer experience. Sure. If you can make a consumer experience frictionless, uh, create a great environment through tech, it automatically helps. That's the first thing because we are here for the consumer. Yeah. The second part is what we call the pillar of efficiency. Yeah. As you grow as a chain, if I'm a single outlet, maybe tech won't help me as much. Sure. I could probably do maths on my mind. Yeah. But when you have multiple cities, multiple outlets growing like crazy I think the only way you can actually keep a ball eye on the ball is through tech because otherwise you won't be able to do it the third pillar which has just been added is the deep data Yes. And data is the new oil, most, uh, you know, everybody calls it now. And I think it is a great oil for us because that will allow us to now go bespoke, go, you know, relevant to the personal, personalized well, yeah. but also actually create great efficiency tools for ourselves. Yeah. And I would not think any restaurant company in India would have data scientists hired or app developers hired. I'm not talking about third party. Wow. Employed and in team members, in-house. Wow. We have that team that all together. Sense. We don't have a CTO because I play that role. <laughs> But that is, that's the amount of tech, uh, yeah. uh, you know, let's say bandwidth we have right now. You're an admitted whiskey lover. Yes. Why beer though then? So beer is business and beer is the, uh, I would say more natural business to be. Uh, it's the second largest selling beverage yeah. in the world. Uh, you know, after tea? After, after water and tea is the third largest. Wow. In India, it's the second largest consumed packaged beverage. You'll be surprised. After eight to drinks. Seriously? Yes. I had no idea. It's much more than milk, packaged milk, wow. much more than packaged water. Wow. And much more than pack packaged nectar juices. Because wow. in India, we don't have real juices. We have nectar, which means right. some mix of pulp and stuff. Yes. So it is the second largest consumed beverage in a packaged form. Uh, obviously, we sell more whiskey in India sure. in terms of uh, value. Not in liters, we yes. sell more beers in liters than value. Yeah. Uh, but whiskey is what the country drinks. Mm. And I'm just saying, we could have been in the whiskey business. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we, we could have only three businesses. I'll say it was spirits, beer, and wine. Okay. So when we did our own uh, little thing, we realized that spirits is what normally people drink to get drunk. Sure. You're getting a high on it. Yeah. Wine is in still a kind of a longer story. Yeah. I'm not saying it's written off. Sure. It's going to only take a while uh, for India. That's, but beer is what the millennials are drinking. And the whole craft revolution, which is where we actually play a role, yeah. is what's happening in the world. We're mirroring that. The craft beer business in the world has just gone crazy. Wow. Just crazy across any marketplace. Even Italy has 400 craft breweries wow. in a country which is uh, wine dominated. So I'm just saying that is being mirrored in India. And we've seen that happen. We started off at 
10 or 15 brands on a menu. We are more than 150 now 150 in five brands. years. Yeah, wow. and uh, it's is a perishable liquor. So yes. to keep 150 in the right way is also not easy. And you know that's a, another story on supply chain. But I'm just saying. So we realize that businesses of beer makes more sense. But what I drink personally has got nothing to do with where I invest. <laughs> What's been the hardest part of building the beer cafe? Uh, the first was talent. Okay. Uh, nobody, your vision is on paper yeah. in your mind. To have that go through the entire, uh, you know, team that you're going to build was very difficult. Yeah. Uh, also, when you're not, uh, don't have the kind of silly money, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you can't, so you can't afford an infrastructure. So I think those were trying days, starting from a little uh, small office with two people, three people, and growing to that matter. We actually worked for almost two years in somebody else's office. Wow. We didn't have an office, and so I had the, I would say. Uh, privileged to have the team which still is uh, there and that team has been able to kind of see through that journey and where we are going and so I think that's been the greatest uh, help uh, we've not had anybody leave us our attrition levels are three percent wow. which is probably the lowest in the industry particularly in this industry. in this industry is almost 90 percent exactly. attrition in in certain QSRs yeah. so it's been very low this business is with liquor or alcohol in it. Alcohol actually needs emotions because you're sad or happy, you would need it both times. You need that guy to have an eye contact. So I think that is very important for us. So I've been very lucky, 700 people now, and um, they're all, you know, what we call uh, the, 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 the ace team. You know, they literally, I couldn't have gotten better. Also, not being from the industry, one, it's remarkable that you established such a well known brand across the country. Two, you today also are recognized in the industry to the extent that today you are leading the NRAI. Uh, how has that experience been additive to, to your experience as an entrepreneur? So, so uh, I call myself as the youngest kid in that, uh, you know, in that big committee that we have. We have 30 management committee members, yeah. stalwarts, veterans, and then we've got you know, another 100,000 restaurants that you know, are members. But those 30 people I look up to who basically uh, uh, create the office bearers, they're the ones who vote for the presidency. And for me, that was an honor because I started off in an area as a volunteer. Yeah. I wanted to be part of this. Uh, this is three, four years back. I think they saw me doing well, uh, made me the general secretary. Uh, uh, sorry, honorary secretary, and from that honorary secretary, I moved into a vice president role last year. And then, when our, you know, President Riaz had a health issue, uh, he would have been the president even now, and he still is in my mind. But he, because of health reasons, he had to uh, take his seat off. But everybody kind of just voted for me as a natural choice. So it was an honor, a great responsibility. And I think what they see is that I am a person who walks the talk. Mm -hmm. And that is what everybody tells me that, you know, uh, good or bad, I will take a decision yeah. and I will move on. I never procrastinate. I never do that. And that could be harmful sometimes, but I really don't care. I think we should not procrastinate. Yeah. How are you as a leader? What's your leadership style like? Uh, you'll have to ask everybody. Uh, from a perspective, a lot of people uh, think I'm very ruthless, and I am. Uh, I'm cut and dry. I believe that um, uh, what you do at home has nothing to do with work. I have one big principle that I never have any uh, family member in my business, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's my own wife or whether it's my sister, anybody and everybody, even the most distant cousin cannot be employed. Uh, and that's the reason because I don't want uh, you know, personal bias. I've never called anybody home yet. Nobody's ever been to my house. I'm an absolute private person when it comes to it. Not a single person has ever come to my house wow. today, like six years. Uh, having said that, like I said, uh, it's an open door. I've never closed my door. Even an interview, I take in an open door policy. Everything that I do, my papers are lying. Anybody can shift through it. There is uh, total transparency. Yes, I think people are reluctant to speak up sometimes because they find me as a as uh, like a whirlwind, you know, like this guy's on some mission. So, but I think uh, the only thing I tell everybody is that if you have anything, uh, try and bring the solutions with you. Yeah. Uh, one thing I can do is the decision will be instant. Yeah. But if you bring solutions, it'll be a better thing. Exactly. You know, bring the options basically. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you do besides work? So there are four passions. Okay. Um, and uh, one is uh, music, okay. and I'm more of a what we call an alternative jazz person. Mm -hmm. I really that's my 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 time. Nobody likes that in my yeah. office or anywhere else. That's the only music nobody likes. <laughs> so it's my music, okay. uh, which I, I keep to that. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, um, I'm a mobile freak. Okay. Uh, we're a part of mobile, motorcycle groups, and um, uh, that's something. And this is more leisure biking. Earlier it was really uh, bad biking. Okay. In my earlier days when I was you know married 22 years back now, yeah. and I remember you know it was 
my wife would actually get upset with the way I would ride and you know we would go out but those were younger days yeah. today it's more leisure and more weekends uh, apart from that like I said I collect single malts that's that's my third yeah. and then the fourth one is um, I'm a crazy reader like uh, I would read anything that comes my way to the point that uh, you know, my family gets upset that I would even read everything that a sauce bottle has on it. She said, why can you not stop reading? If wow. you're sitting in a place, there's nothing to read. Yeah. I would pick up anything that's there and I'll start reading it. <laughs> Last unfair question. When you look back, do you think you would have done anything else? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So if I were to turn back the clock, uh -huh. nothing to do with the brand, sure. nothing to do with product, nothing to do with people and whatever. Everything has been A class. Uh -huh. I think India is a very value for money, which has happened due to the burn yeah. that a <coughs> lot of marketplaces, yeah. even yours yeah. and others have created. So, and we've also seen a lot of people who've come in after I've come in. Sure. Value for money in India is a very big trigger. Sure. Uh, meaning experience is important, but I think it's first we have even the experience needs to have value for money. Yes. You know, if I can give you a chopper ride for like five thousand rupees, yeah. boom, you'll have a queue out there. Yeah. It's not about the chopper ride. It's like getting a chopper for five thousand rupees. The trigger is very different. Right. I don't need to go on a chopper ride, sure. but because it's five thousand rupees, might as well. So yeah. I think that that's the only thing that I feel because my VC and ourselves came from the beginning that we are here to make money old school, which means you make a revenue, you make a profit, take out your expenses, and then you have you know surpluses. Yeah. Yeah. That is how the business model was. And so the amount of money, so I can tell you that the total money we've raised till date, we have done till now six times the revenues of the money we've raised till date. Yes, I should have been able to have a little bit of that freedom to create uh, a bigger cohort on uh, that VFM customer. Right now we considered little spiffy and pricey because though it's craft, so it is more expensive, but people never ever call me a value for money brand. I wish we could probably turn that out. It's a pleasure Rahul, thank you so much and all the best with everything. You're always an inspiration and will continue to be so and it's a privilege to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.